I'm excited to welcome you to the absolute best video on arithmetic operators you'll find anywhere on YouTube. In this video, I cover everything you need to know in detail and use interactive animations, beautiful illustrations, and professional editing to ensure you remain engaged in order to maximize your learning. So let's jump in. So let's start off nice and slow and discuss what are operators. Operators perform actions on variables and values. In our juice bar analogy, we can think of it like this. We have an ingredient, like a whole apple. In the kitchen, we can use a knife to cut the apple, and we end up with slices of apple, which we can then put in the blender. The exact same thing is happening in JavaScript, where instead of an ingredient, we have a primitive value, like a number. We then perform an operation, and the number is transformed. So let's now take a look at the types of operators. In JavaScript, there are several different types of operators. They include arithmetic operators, which we'll be looking at in this video. There are string operators, which allow us to modify text. There are assignment operators, which we've already seen so far and allows us to assign values to variables. And we're gonna be extending our knowledge on the assignment operator in a few videos time. We have comparison operators, which is essential for control flow and allows us to make decisions in our code. We have logical operators, which is also critical for control flow and allowing us to make decisions. We have the ternary operator, which is a special kind of operator we're gonna be looking at later. We have the type of operator, which we'll also be looking at later. And we have bitwise operators. Bitwise operators are about working with binary numbers, but in everyday programming, this isn't so useful. So it's not something I'm gonna go into detail in this course, but I wanted to just make a note, they are another kind of operator. So let's now go through all the arithmetic operators. Arithmetic operators, as you could probably guess, perform mathematical calculations. I'm gonna be summarizing all the arithmetic operators inside this table. Now, most of these you should be already familiar with, but there are a handful that may be new to you. I'll be going through the name, the operator symbol, its purpose, an example, and the result of the example. So first up, we have addition, which is just the plus symbol. Its purpose is it adds values. An example is two plus three, which equals five. We have subtraction, which is the minus sign. This subtracts values. An example is eight minus six, which gives us two. The next operator is division, which in JavaScript we write as a forward slash, and this divides values. An example is 20 divide five, which gives us four. The next one is multiplication, which in JavaScript we write using the asterisk symbol, and this multiplies values. An example is four by three, which gives us 12. The next one is called the modulus. The operator symbol is a percentage, and this calculates the remainder of a division. So for example, 10 modulus three would equal one. That's because three goes into 10 three times and has a remainder of one. The next operator is exponentiation, which is an exponential. Inside JavaScript, we use two asterisks, and this raises a number to a power. An example is two to the power of three, which is eight. That is two multiplied by itself three times. All right, we're now going to be looking at two arithmetic operators that are very useful in JavaScript that you may have not come across before. The first one is the increment operator. And just a note, this can only be applied on variables. We use the symbol plus plus. This adds one to the current value. So for example, we could have let x equal five, and then we could write x plus plus. This would give us a result of six. The complete opposite to the increment operator is the decrement operator. And again, this can only be applied on variables. In JavaScript, we write it like this, two minus signs, and this subtracts one from the current value. As an example, let's say we had let y equal 10. If we then did y minus minus, the value of y would now be nine. So let's now go play around with these. All right, it's easiest to play around with these inside the console. I'm gonna right click inspect to open up DevTools, and I'm gonna head to the console. One thing I wanna show you, which is sometimes useful to optimize the size of the console is to actually remove it from the browser and pop it into its own window. To do this, I'm gonna click these three dots and I'm gonna click this icon over here. This now effectively allows me to work just inside the console and I don't need to see the actual web page. All right, let's just do some simple maths. I'll do four plus five, this gives us nine. Let's do a subtraction, seven minus three gives us four, a multiplication, Two by seven gives us 14. Let's do a division. Six divided three gives us two. For the modulus, let's go do six modulus four. So four goes into six once with a remainder of two. For the exponential, let's go do three to the power of four. 
This gives us 81, that is, 3 times itself, 4 times. Let's now check out the increment and decrement operators. I'm going to go let x equal 10, and I'll go x plus plus. Now, we get back 10, but if I actually look at the value of x, it is 11. And I'm going to be discussing why this happened in a second. If I now go x minus minus, so now I'm reducing the value of x by 1, we get back 11, but if I actually look at the value of x, it is 10. So why exactly did that happen? This has to do with the position of the increment and decrement operator. The position of the increment and decrement operator affects when the value is incremented or decremented. So there are two possible positions of the increment and decrement operator. The first is pre-increment and pre-decrement, and looks like this, plus plus x and minus minus x. This changes the value before it is used. So back in the console, if I define a variable, let z equal 5, and I now do plus plus z, instead of z plus plus like I did earlier, you'll see we get back the value 6. So this is changing the value before it's used. And when I say used, I mean returned in the console. Let's now use the pre-decrement operator, so minus minus z, you'll see I'm given back the value 5. We then have post-increment and post-decrement. This is what we initially saw, where we have x plus plus or x minus minus. And this uses the value first and then changes it afterwards. Looking at this again in the console, our current value of z is 5. So if I go z plus plus, the value is used first, that is returned to the console, but it has actually been changed afterwards. As you can see, z is 6. The same with post-decrement. Z minus minus, we're given back 6, but the value has actually changed to 5. Now, this might seem pretty confusing, and the obvious question you're going to have is which one should I be using? In most code, the difference between pre and post is negligible, but the post increment decrement is considered more readable. So throughout this course, I'm going to be using the post increment and decrement, and although the difference seems quite serious in the console, in our actual code, it doesn't really make a difference. So don't worry too much about this. We're going to be using the post increment and decrement notation as it's a bit cleaner to look at and just makes a bit more intuitive sense. That is, we have the value x and are incrementing it or decrementing it by 1. So the next topic we need to discuss is order precedence. These are rules that determine the order in which operations are evaluated. Most of this will hopefully be familiar from what you learnt in school. I learned the acronym BIDMAS. That is, B stands for brackets, which looks like this, brackets 4 plus 3 equals 7. And anything inside brackets will be evaluated first. We then have I, which stands for index. So 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. We then have division and multiplication, where the order of these don't matter. So for example, 10 times 3 divide 5 equals 6. If I did 10 times 3 first, I get 30 divide 5, which equals 6. If I do 3 divide 5 first, I get 3 fifths. 3 fifths of 10, that is 10 by 3 fifths, is 6. So the order in which multiplication and division appears doesn't matter, but will always be executed after brackets or an index if they appear in the same calculation. We then have A for addition and S for subtraction. And again, the order of these together don't make a difference. If, for example, we have 5 plus 4 minus 2, this equals 7. If I do 5 plus 4 first, I get 9 minus 2, which is 7. If I do 4 minus 2 first, I get 2, and then 5 plus 2 is 7. But once again, addition and subtraction will always be performed last after a statement that contains brackets, indices, and division and multiplication. So let's now have a look at how these work together. I'll first be doing an example across these two. We'll do 4 plus 3 times by 2. So this now contains addition for the last block, AS, and multiplication from the third block, DM. Now, bid mass is our order of precedence. And because addition and subtraction appear last, it means that we're going to be performing the multiplication first. So that is 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6. So now we're left with this, 4 plus 6. And this is just simple addition, which gives us 10. Now, the order here is really important. If I didn't abide by these rules and did 4 plus 3 first, I'd get 7. Multiply that by 2 is 14. And that answer is wrong. I have to follow the bid mass order of precedence. Let's now go do another example across all of these. I'll be doing 24 divide 2 to the power of 3 minus 1. So this now contains an index, a division, and a subtraction. 
According to Bidmas, we need to do the index first. So that is 2 to the power of 3. This gives us 24 divide 8. 8 is 2 to the power of 3 minus 1. We're now left with division and subtraction. And according to Bidmas, we need to do the division first. So 24 divide 8 is 3. So we're left with 3 minus 1. And this is just simple subtraction. So we're left with the answer of 2. Let's now go do an example across all of them. I have 13 plus 3 in brackets, minus 64 divided by 2 to the power of 4. So going from left to right, we first do our brackets, which is 13 plus 3, which is 16. So we're left with 16 minus 64 divide 2 to the power of 4. The next letter is I for index. So we're going to go do 2 to the power of 4, which is 16. So now we have 16 minus 64 divide 16. We now have a subtraction and a division. And according to bid mass, we now need to do the division. 64 divide 16 is 4. So we're left with 16 minus 4, which gives us a final answer of 12. So hopefully a lot of this you'll remember from school, but it is important I do recap it so you're familiar with this when we perform any calculations in JavaScript. Now we have looked at other arithmetic operators, so how do they fit in here? So from Bidmas, we have our grouping, we have exponentials, we have division, multiplication, and we have addition and subtraction. So I'm going to make some space between B and I. And in here fits our increment and decrement operators. So just be mindful that increment and decrement will execute after grouping, but before everything else. The other one we looked at was modulus, that is that percentage symbol. And this actually fits in with the division and multiplication. So if you have a calculation which contains multiplication, division, or modulus, it actually doesn't matter what order you do it in. So let's now go and check out arithmetic operators in action. The good news is that in most cases, they're used in a very simple way. Looking at our EasyJet webpage, looking at the fares, we have adult and child, and you can see multiplication is being used to multiply the number of passengers by the ticket price. Down below, we have a discount where subtraction is used to remove it from the total price. And in the basket, addition is being used to add together the adult fare, child fare, and discount. On the home page, you can see at the moment there are two adults on the fare. To add an adult, we would use the plus symbol, and this is adding one to the current value. So an increment operator is being used here. On the left, we have the minus symbol, which would take away a passenger from the current value. And this is being achieved by the decrement operator. So let's wrap up the theory of this video by building a summary card, arithmetic operators. We looked at the eight different operators. We had addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, the modulus, which gave us the remainder when two numbers were divided by each other. We then had exponentiation, which is raising a number to a power. And we had the increment and decrement operators, which we know are performed on variables. We also spent a good chunk of the video looking at order precedence. Now that you've mastered the theory so far in this video, it's important to understand how we can apply it in a real world project. If you haven't been following along in other parts before this, I recommend you download the starter files in the description below and code along with me. This project is part of my JavaScript full course. You can join me for free on YouTube by clicking the video appearing in the top right now. So let's now go and apply arithmetic operators inside our BMI project. So on our list of things to do, we're now going to be adding arithmetic operators. Now what we're going to go do is add the BMI equation into our JavaScript file. You can see the BMI equation is the weight in kilograms divided by the height in meters squared. So let's go now add this equation to our project. So I'm back inside our app.js file. Now one thing I want to go do is improve the messages over here so it's clear what units the user should be entering. We're taking weight in kilogram and height in meters. Now one thing I do need to correct is that because we're entering meters here, we're going to be entering it as a decimal, like 1.53. And because we're entering this as a decimal, pass int will only save the integer part of that number. Now in a previous video, I was entering this value in centimeters. So pass int was fine there, because we'd enter a value like 175 centimeters. But now that I know from the equation it has to be in meters, we need to go change this to pass float, so that we're able to store a value that contains a decimal. Pass int's fine, because we're going to be expecting a whole number like 62. Now, if you wanted to accept a decimal number, you would need to change this to pass float as well. But for our purposes, I'm going to expect that the user enters a whole number. All right, so let's go add the equation. It is weight divided by height 
which we know we can use the exponential operator, which is asterisk asterisk and the number two. This takes height and multiplies it by itself. Now from our order precedence, we know that this is going to execute first, and then we'll have weight divided by the height squared. Now this is performing the calculation, but we want to store this variable somewhere. So what we're going to do is store this in a variable. I'm going to go let BMI equal this equation. So what will happen now is that the weight and height will be inputted from the user. It will then be calculated using this equation, and the result of this equation will be stored in the BMI variable. And just so we can see the result of this, under output, I'm going to go console.log BMI. I'll put my semicolon there, and I should also have a semicolon here. All right, let's test this out in the browser. All right, so I'm going to enter my weight in kilograms, 80. I'm going to enter my height, 1.75 meters, and my gender, M for male. Great, you can see the BMI has been calculated. Now, this is a really good start, but for the BMI calculator to be useful, we need to know how this compares to ranges of values to put me in the right category, like underweight, normal weight, overweight, or obese. And we'll be continuing to work on the project to do that. But what you've learned so far is great. We're using variables to take in values from the user, we're performing a calculation, and we're outputting that value to the console. If you've enjoyed this style of teaching and are looking at mastering JavaScript, you can join me in my JavaScript full course, which is available for free on my channel. The course is designed for complete beginners and covers everything you need to know to code JavaScript at a professional level. In the course, you'll experience the same high quality teaching and build a whole range of real life projects from scratch. Join me today and also make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay in the loop with new releases. See you in the JavaScript full course.